Hebrews, the twelfth, um, fourth chapter, go to um, verse number twelve. <laughs> For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God is quick and powerful. The word quick means to be alive. The word of God is alive. And it is powerful. Those are the two issues that I want you to keep in mind as we deal with these topics. The word of God is alive. The Bible that you have in your hand, the Bible says that word is alive. It is a living thing. The Bible says my word is spirit and it is life. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The word of God is alive. The reason why you got saved was because you heard the word. The word was not dead when you heard it. It was alive. It came alive in your heart, and it changed your heart for the better. You were born again by the word of God. So this Bible is not just some book, but it is the very life and nature of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. The same word that was in the beginning has come down to us. Amen. The word of God is living. It is alive. It is a living thing. When you read the word of God, you are receiving the life of God into your heart. That's how you got saved. That's how you got saved. You received the life. When you heard that word, it brought life to you, and it changed you. So this is not just some book, but this is Christ himself. In the beginning was the word, the word was God. Same Jesus that we saw or that they saw walking the earth was the word of God manifested. That's who he was. That's who Jesus, the physical man, Jesus, was the manifestation of the word of God. I'm trying to get you to understand that the word is alive. It is living. This is not just some book, but the word is Christ. Amen. Amen. He was manifested. The word of God was manifested in the flesh, and it walked among men. And now you have the word in your hand that has now come alive, and this word is now living in you. Amen. The same word that was in the beginning has now been deposited in you, and that word is alive, is living in you. That's why you have to feed on the word. Yes, sir. Because right. anything that's born has to stay connected to where it comes from. Fish have to stay in the water or they'll die. You, you came from the word. You are born of the incorruptible word. And so you have to stay connected to the word. Jesus said, if you abide in the vine, you will live. He said, you can ask what you desire and it'll be done. But if you get disconnected from the vine, he says, the only thing you're good for is be gathered up and burned. Yes. You got to stay connected to what you come from. You came from the word. You got to live by the word. Yeah, yeah. You got to stay connected to what you come from. There's power. There is life in the word. All right, let's go to the first one. Go to um, Acts, the third chapter. Acts 3. Acts 3, we're going to move quick. We're going to move quick. Acts, the third chapter. The first way to get healing, the first avenue that will bring you to healing, we're going to find it here in the book of Acts, the third chapter. Go down to verse number 16. Verse number 16, we find here the story of where Peter, well, uh, we're going to the place to pray, going to the synagogue to pray. He saw the man who was at the gate begging. The man looked at him. Peter said, look at me. Uh, 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 Sitting God, have I none? But such as I have, I give unto you. He, uh, he said, told the man in the name of Jesus, uh, rise up and be healed. He reached down, picked the man up. The man was healed in his body. The Bible says immediately he received strength in his ankle. His body received strength yes. when Peter pulled him up. And so now we got this man who has been lame, who has been sick all this time, who is now healed, and the people around want to know why or how. What's going on? I've seen this man all these years. He's been sick. He's been lame. And now all of a sudden he's healed in his body. What happened? That's the question 
What happened? By what power? By what authority is this man healed? By what power? How is this man who was sick now healed? What happened? And so Paul, uh, Peter here answers the question in verse number 16. He says, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. The first part of verse number 16, and his name. Mm -hmm. The first way or the first path to divine healing is through the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is greater than any sickness that will attack your body. The name of Jesus is more powerful than any issue you will face in this world. So the first avenue that can get you to healing is if you invoke or use the name of Jesus. If you use the name of Jesus, that name is greater than any pain or any issue you will ever face. And through that name, you can command healing in your body. Amen. It's the first path. It's the first avenue. Something happened in your body, you feel something in your body, in the name of Jesus, you can speak to that issue, and that issue has to go. Why? Because the name of Jesus is greater. Yes. The Bible says the reason why his name is greater is because of the things that he suffered. The things that he has endured. Because of those things, the Father has given him a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every, at the name of Jesus, every tongue will confess. The name of Jesus, the Bible says, that name is above everything in heaven, in the earth, and even underneath the earth. He says, the name of Jesus is greater. Yes. So you're facing something in your life, you feel something in your body, something doesn't feel right, the doctor gives you a negative report, one of the ways you can deal with that is through the name of Jesus. I speak to that pain, I speak to that issue in the name of Jesus. Yes. I command this lot to die, to be consumed, and to pass from my body in the name of Jesus. I command this pain to go, to leave my body in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I command this body to be made whole, to be strengthened in the name of Jesus. I command my child to be healed in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. And the body of Christ got to go back to using the name of Jesus. Stop trying to wrestle and fight with things in your own strength and in your own wisdom, your own ability, and learn how to use, take advantage of, utilize the name of Jesus. We've gotten away from these principles of faith. Use the name of Jesus. There's power in the name. Yes. Use the name. Amen. Don't sit there frustrated, aggravated. Use the name. Don't let depression and heartache, aggravation take you over. Use the name. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you. you go to work, you've been having problems on the job. You walk on the job. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak peace on this job. Yes. I speak peace on this job. There won't be any frustration. There won't be any heartache. I speak peace today, Father, in the name of Jesus. Everybody that deal with me will deal righteously with me in the name of Jesus. That your will be done in this house in the name of Jesus. You take authority over your house. Why? In the name of Jesus. I speak life into my house. I speak peace over my house. I speak joy in my house. I bind any sickness, any infirmity that would try to infiltrate my home. I speak life in this house in Jesus' mighty name. You gotta put the name to work. That's the first avenue. Use that word, use that name, it brings victory into your life. The devil understands that he is defeated. He understands that that name is above him. He understands that that name is greater than him. He understands that when you use that name, he has to respond. He has to obey. He has to do what you say when you use that name. The name is greater than any other thing you face. The name, take the name. There's power in the name. All right, number two. Let's go to James, the fifth chapter. Five ways that you can walk in divine healing. All you need is one. 
The reason why I'm giving you five different ways that the Bible teaches healing is because I need you to understand that it's God's will for you to be healed in your body. Mm -hmm. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You need to understand that it is God's will for you to be healed. It is God's will for you to have health in your body. God does not want you to be sick. God does not want you to be broken in your body. God does not want you to be downcast and downtrodden in your body. God's desire for you is for you to be healed, for you to have health in your body. That's God. God wants you to have health in your mind. He wants you to have peace of mind. God wants you to, your thoughts to be clear. God does not want you to be frustrated. God does not want you to be aggravated. God does not want you to be broken hearted. God wants you to have peace. He says, I give you a peace that's not of this world. That's, the, that's God's will for you. But you have to be persuaded. You have to have a made up mind that it's God's will that I have peace, that I have healing in my body, that my body is not broken down, that my body is not uh, 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 sick and, 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 and downcast, but God wants me to have strength in my body. All right, let's go to James, James, the uh, fifth chapter. Go to verse number 14, the uh, uh, second avenue or second way. The Bible teaches healing. The Bible teaches healing. James, the fifth chapter. Go down to verse number 14, James 5 and 14. All right. Verse number 14, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have uh, committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The second avenue or the second path to divine healing is the prayer of faith. He said, if there's any sick among you, he says, let them call for the elders. Now, we've got two things that we're dealing with here. Now, you can call for the elders. That's one way. Who, or that's one person who can pray the prayer of faith. Or you can pray the prayer of faith yourself. Either way, the pathway or the road that you're taking is called the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. He says, let them call for the elder. And through the prayer what is the prayer of faith? The prayer of faith is when you lay hands on either they lay hands on you or you lay hands on yourself and you pray healing into your body. Amen. You pray healing into your body. Matter of fact, let me let me give you some scripture here. Let's go to um uh let's go to uh <coughs> Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Go to Psalms 103 real fast, real fast. I told y'all last Sunday we were um, talking about prayer with the, how we pray using the word of God. Praying in line with the word of God. Taking the word of God, the Bible says, is the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Taking the word of God and using the word of God in your prayer. Go to Psalms 103. Go down to, um, matter of fact, we just started at verse number one. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crieth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied my mouth with great things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, if I'm going to utilize the prayer of faith, I take what I just read, and instead of saying,